Welcome to the Floor Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hadeen, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Mesa, Arizona. Thank you for tuning in, and I want to encourage you to go get your earbuds, put this in while you're working, learn while you earn. I want to help you take yourself from owning a job to owning a business and from owning a business to owning an asset, one that can generate you income and you don't have to be there. So we're always talking the business side of things and trying to help you get one step closer to being able to put yourself in doing only the position that you truly love. And if that's installing, more power to you. Some people want to be in the office. Some people want to do marketing. Find the thing that you really love. Outsource the rest. Uh, this week, I have got Luke Wagner with me, and we are going to talk about client relationships. Before we dive into that, I want to say that make sure to go to the Floor Academy group page, find the post about my partnership with Better Tools for this 36-inch tile cutter behind me, like it, go over to the Better Tools page, like their page, and we're going to compare notes at the end of May, and we're going to do a drawing and give away this 36 inch tile cutter that they gave me from coverings 2022 in Vegas. And I will ship that out to you and you will have yourself a nice 36 inch cutter. Luke Wagner, welcome to the floor Academy podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, we are on a little bit of a time crunch folks. Um, he, We've had scheduling issues and he has an appointment to make for one of his kids, which I totally respect. So we may come in a little under an hour on this one and that's okay. We're going to try and uh, we're going to make this happen. So who are you? What do you do? Why do you do it? What's the the quick, you know, little overview? Yeah, quick, yeah, quick blurb is I'm Luke Wagner with Cornerstone Home Lending. So we are a residential retail lender. We lend money to borrowers for buying a home, refinancing a home, trying to help people get into a better stronger financial position for their families okay how long you been doing that uh, nearly 18 years so may will be 18 years okay so all of a sudden you look back and i'm asked it's almost two decades holy cow a lot of changes in that too from from how the mm -hmm. lending aspects and rules and regulations were through a downturn and, and the great recession to now and so i'm sure that's that's been a challenge to navigate as well Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I started doing lending in May 2006. That was a great time. Values were going up. People were cashing out refi, super easy. We had a cr terrible crash at the end of 07, right after my son was born. 2008 was probably a real low point, and, you know, being a lender was t terrible. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I couldn't get another job though. I tried I, every time I, I get another job. It was, so, so 2009 turned, some different programs came out, started allowing some more income. Unfortunately, it's worked out and every year it's been a great growth opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, do you have any, I don't even know, we didn't even talk about this. So I'm going to you know, throw a curveball at you. Do you have any data on like what the average time between needing a, a mortgage lender like yourself is like how long are people holding homes now because traditionally right like you used to you'd buy and hold for like 20 years people would live in a, in a place a really long time and i feel like that time frame is shortened like people are moving constantly you know five five years maybe yeah i'd say the average life of a loan is three to five years you know they, people you know right now rates are going up they've gone up mm -hmm. uh very very quickly in a very short amount of time in 2022 um but there's always going to be a need for people to either refinance for a cash out they need to consolidate debt i mean right now you've had people getting mortgage interest rates in the three some somewhere in the twos you know a while mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. for a decade and that's kind of the, like the new conversation is millennials which will be 50 percent of home buyers in 2022 have seen their friends, their family get get three percent rates for a decade. <laughs> so they think that's the normal. And yeah. we're like, yeah, rates right now are in the mid fives. And I mean, it, we were getting people three and a half in January. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, that's a crazy influ or inflation. And you know, we keep constantly reminding people, listen, in 2012, people were begging for six percent. Six point one two five was an amazing rate. You know, yeah. it's yeah. it's a big smack in the face for a lot of people right now. Yeah, I was lo I locked into something what I refinanced in like 2010 after buying in 2000 late 2008 and I was at like 4.3 something. 
Yeah. And I, I just recently scraped together the cash and, and sent them a large check and I'm an, I'm an actual homeowner now. Good for so, you. That's yeah, awesome. Correct. That's great. Now, now now we save up and we get ready to go buy another one with a horrible interest rate, but oh well. That, that's right. Yeah, just it, flip it to a rental. Make some money. Well, that's exactly it. Is I, that's that's the plan for this building here is it should become an excellent rental. It's got a good great location, great starter home, but uh we're we're kind of getting a little off track. So, uh, you know, 3 to 5 years average lifespan of a loan, uh, it's it, People are doing that more than they're doing flooring, unless they put flooring in every house that they that they go to. Right. Um, yeah. But even that's traditionally like a purchase. You know, you put in some a tile floor. It's probably good for ten mm. to fifteen years before you're just like, hey, the trends have changed. I absolutely have to redo it. And it's not the same as being a, a fast food restaurant where like, hey, I got to eat today. Like I'm going to go right. Like I can make this buying decision over and over and over again. What are some things that you've done to really have a relationship with your clients and, and start staying in front of them so they remember Cornerstone Cornerstone Home Lending, but specifically you, Lou Wagner, you know, three years down the road, five years down the road. Mm-hmm. So they're calling you and they're not just picking up the phone or going online to what, like bankrate.com and getting five different, you know, offers from the giant lenders out there yeah bankrate.com lending sheet those are all lead generators right nobody knows that they think they're gonna get a quote and also they're getting information mm-hmm. sold from companies you know i think what i do is i speak and i build a relationship with my clients on a different level it's not just hey let's look at your fico score your debt ratio your loan to value and here's what the loan looks like you know we go I like to go a little, a lot deeper into their family, you know, their hobbies, what they do, you know, really just caring about people and their interests. Mm -hmm. Uh, And obviously that's easy when you have a lot of clientele that have similar interests, right? So I've always lived pretty rural. I got kind of a more rural um, clientele base, I would say. It's not metropolitan. So a lot of uh, beliefs, a lot of thoughts are very similar. And so when you can have that kind of a connection where people uh, not just trust you to do the good job, but also like you as a person, that's a, that's a heightened relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. And then staying in touch with those people, you know, Hey, you see their kids selling Girl Scout cookies, buy a box, you know, it's five bucks. It's supporting yeah. their family. You know, you see their birthday on Facebook, you know, give them a text, give them a call, mm-hmm. you know, tell them what you're thinking about them. Even if they don't understand, leave a voicemail. You know, I think a lot of people don't do that. They just kind of keep it on the very business side of it, mm-hmm. uh, technical side of it. And then like, you know, we want, want to be professional too, but there's just a, a more personal relationship there. Well, so I would say for me, that's really easy to do. People invite me into their home, right? I have to go look at this project and they have pictures everywhere. They have bookshelves, right? Like I can start picking out, hey, your kid plays baseball. You went to Disneyland. You vacationed on some tropical island. Like I can see the little details and start picking out things to have the conversation about. Most likely, they're either calling you up and starting the conversation on the phone or they're coming into your your office, which you don't have any contextual clues as to like what to lead you in. So how are you getting off topic to start building that relationship while you're doing this paperwork? Instead of, you know, you, you could sit down with the form, right? And you can be like, okay, answer this question, answer this question, answer this question. And, and people's time is valuable, so I, you, you want to get it done, but how are you working it in so that it's it's engaging and they don't feel like you're not rushing them, but you're not also keeping mm-hmm. them too long? Yeah, it's a good question. I had a, I had a coworker a couple of years ago ask me about that. He's like, Luke, I need to sit with you. I was like, for what? <laughs> He's like, I need to see what you do. I'm like, man. I, you just take a three hour tour. You got to remember, <laughs> these are people, you know, they want to do a loan with you. They're talking to you because they like you, but they don't want to spend a half a day with you, <laughs> you know? So I usually a lot my schedule to where I give people an hour to an hour and 15 max. If we're going to be doing a face to face engagement, because one, if you go past that, I haven't done, I'm not doing my job. Okay. And two, I need to work on other things as well. Not spending half a day with one couple or individual to do the loan so mm-hmm. through through the conversation piece I, you know i got you know pictures around my office about elk and deer and all sorts of things so you know when you live in a rural community use that spark topic about outdoors and hunting and fishing um, i tell a lot of personal stories you know people 
tell you their life when you're getting uh, asking about their bank accounts and their socials and all these different things that that come up there's there's always some sort of a story that starts off with it you take you know five ten minutes you tell your story you listen to their story you need to kind of re- re- um, memorize that uh, about who was part of that story mm-hmm. right and then you can start asking them those personal questions about their family or their hunting buddies and fishing buddies and oh you want a vacation to Virginia or Idaho, you know, I'm licensed in six different states. So I talked to a few different people. I bounce back and forth between Tennessee and Washington state. So, you know, there's a lot of tangible states, you know, we, you know, a lot of camping and stuff. So those stories just kind of come up when you talk to people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you tracking any of that? Are you using like a, a, you have a CRM that you're putting data into to, to follow up and, and know that, you know, hey, the dog's name is is Bob, and and then they have sons George and and a daughter Susie. Like, are you, are, mm-hmm. or is it you just try and remember as much as you can in your head? It's a little bit of both. So we do have a, a software program called Salesforce. Uh, my assistant primarily uses that, you know, but we do track a lot of notes regarding customers. It also tracks, it collects information uh, from the application. You know, it collects information about their dependents. Their, the kids' ages, and we could go in there and hop in there and make notes about the kids' names and are they playing soccer or they're playing basketball, they broke a leg, they broke an arm, you know, and, you know, I'm 42 years old, we're almost 42 years old, so it's like, you know, my kids broke legs and arms, and so those stories that we can uh, be compatible with mm-hmm. uh, further that, nurture that relationship and then deeper the conversation is, again, having like-minded things happen. Yeah, the Salesforce is what we use for that. Okay, no, and it's I I think it's it's huge to be able to do stuff like that because I actually I, I went and did a bid two nights ago and I I walked in the house and I'm talking with the homeowner and I'm like hey how's it going nice to see you again da 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 and a dog comes running up to me and I was like Frank mm-hmm. Frankie it's Frank right and she's like well no there's Frank O but this one's new you haven't met this one and and now I don't even remember the name and eventually like Franco came running out at me but I was like well that's not too bad like I was pretty close I got the yeah, Frank part <laughs> so but you know had I have if I actually used a a software to keep track of all the details I could have put that in reviewed the whole file before I went and and done it because her son also just went to she was like oh my son just did prom and i was like junior or senior and she's like oh well they're combined and i was like yeah but it was junior Ooh. prom for him right i was like he's not i was like i know he's older but he's not he's got another year right and she was like yeah yeah, yeah. He, he'll be a senior next year so you you start trying to remember all these little details and it, it, i think being able to store them somewhere and and actually keep track of them a little bit more responsibly will well, go a long way when people reach back out because then you're not fumbling through the details. You're you're very accurate and you can have a better conversation. Yep. And I actually met with a couple of realtors when I was back in Washington in September and we had lunch together and we kind of shared some of those notes. You know, we were like, how did we, what transactions did we do together? We pulled out our phone. Well, your phone, you can do a search in your iPhone, at mm-hmm. least in your contacts. And you can put in, you know, like uh, close loans with this person. And it will actually pull up the group of people you've closed loans with if you've put it in your phone and noted it correctly. Mm-hmm. And so that's a quick way too is use your notes in your phone. You know, two kids, Tommy and Tommy and Jordan. You know, yeah. then you at least know. Hey, to ask about Tommy and Jordan. Hey, how are they doing? Are they in school or what? You know. Yeah, uh, I think one of the best. That, I forget what book it's in, or I, I'm pretty sure it's a story in a book, and I've heard it on a podcast or two that I've listened to. Um, there's a guy that would go to a meeting, have the conversation, immediately go outside. In his glove box, he kept cards. And he'd get out the card after the meeting, and he'd write the Christmas card and be like, hey, you know, just thinking about you. Hope that, you know, Bobby's doing really well in school and, and Susie, you know, is wh- whatever they talked about, right? All these little insights. And then he would set it aside and then Christmas time rolls around and you send out all these Christmas cards and everyone's like, oh, wow, well, how does he remember all this stuff? It's because he wrote the card right away and then sent it out. Smart. That's pretty smart. That's just, but that, that sounds like an office, like a Dunder Mifflin story, right? Doing their sales calls, mm-hmm. maybe having their little Rolodex, all their little notes on there and you grab that uh, when you go. 
Yeah, that is. I mean, I do have some business cards that do have some notes on it. Sometimes if I know I'm going to go meet with someone specific, I'll print off their bio from their real estate website. I'll make notes. And that way, when I go to go to that area, I'm going to be in an area. Mm -hmm. I'll, I will have that little, that little note to take and reference to before I walk in, you know, just to kind of refresh that memory a little bit. Yeah. Any, uh, any special kind of programs you do events you hold to to get past clients together that you're you're doing anything with yeah so we're gonna try to do this annually you know i, I relocated last year so now we're kind of bouncing back and forth so last september we did a uh, we hosted a client and uh, partnership relationship uh appreciation event so we rented a party deck at the Tacoma Rainiers. We had realtors come that we worked with. We had clients that came, some friends. And that was a really great event to kind of bring all three of those legs, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Partners, clients, and friends together to kind of intertwine, mingle. They talk about the game. They talk about, you know, our business. Um, and it's a way to show appreciation. You know, these are people that have choices. They can choose to work with whomever they want. So mm -hmm. for them to choose to work with us and multiple times, that's an honor. Yes, And I think I try to keep that in the forefront of my mind where I think a lot of people, when you do something for so long, let's say you've done flooring, how long have you done flooring? Uh, June, June will be seven years. Yeah. Okay. So you do things over and over and over day in, day out, you mm -hmm. kind of lose a lot of people get desensitized to that. Hey, this is a huge job. This is a big deal. It's a lot of money going into this thing. And what started off as a $2,000 job ended up probably being a $10,000 job. <laughs> Right, you start wondering, yeah. you keep branching out. Well, same thing with mortgages. You know, I do this every day. To me, it's a mortgage, right? I got credit, income, assets. It's the, but we also got to know, that, hey, these people have choices. This is a huge deal for mm -hmm. them. This is mm -hmm. likely the largest thing they're going to probably do ever. And so we try to really be respectful of that, not have people feel rushed, give them professional uh, advice, and work with integrity, and you know, help them make a good decision for their family. You know, ultimately, it's their decision. They can, if they want to do a yeah. an FHA loan, I'm saying you should really do a conventional loan. They're like, wow, I really want FHA. My brother had FHA. Well, this is why you should do this conventional loan. <laughs> I want to do FHA. Like, all right, we'll do FHA. If that's what you want. I, I, I'm going to refinance this thing in eight months to get you out of it, though, just so you know. <laughs> you don't want that FHA <laughs> loan because you can't get rid of the, the PMI on PMI. it. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. I mean, it's, it's a tool. It's not a bad loan, but it's a tool loan. You know, it's not, they're meant to be long term, but some people have in their mind that this yeah. is what they're going to do. I get it. Uh, actually, you bring up a you, you bring up a good point that purchasing a home is a it, it's a big deal. It's a lot of money. It, it's very stressful to, um, to go through. Um, and and you're you're taking a huge risk, right? Essentially, you're taking on three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand, whatever that loan amount is going to be, right? right? And and you're right. saying, okay, for the next. 15 or 30 years or whatever, I, I'm going to come up with this money every month. And you're, you're right. I think that we, we do get desensitized to it because I can go and look at a project and I'm like, nah, it's just your average $10,000 project, right? Like no big right. deal to so that homeowner. How long did they have to work to save up that $10,000? And, and maybe it's a smaller project. Maybe they've been saving for a year. And they just want to do a 150 square foot little bedroom and and make their new office look nice. So that couple thousand dollars really, really matters to them. And mm -hmm. you you need to spend the time, give them the respect and and appreciate that they they chose you and you're gonna help navigate them through this process. We're they're not the expert. That's why they're coming to us. I don't know how to do a loan. If I knew how to do a loan, sure, I'd I'll fill out all the stuff myself, but I don't. So I have to go to somebody such as such as you. They need to come to somebody like me to get a floor done. And and you 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 guide them through the process, right? We we hold their hands and we get mm -hmm. them from point A to point B and, and make them feel uh valued and and respected. And so what are the little things you're doing to really show that right and and like you said you can become desensitized so how are you trying to keep it fresh and in your mind that just because i do six of these a day doesn't mean this one's not special to this you know the client in front of me now 
Yeah, you know, I don't know if I there's really a special thing or, or a really specific way to say what, what I do. I think just sometimes it's a it's an eye opener when you talk to a builder even that doesn't really understand the loan program. It's like, well, you're a builder. Why don't you understand this? <laughs> well, they build houses. They build condos. They build houses or commercial property. They don't they don't get the financing for the client to buy those things. Um, and I've talked with a lot of people that don't think they can qualify to buy a home. And I'm like, why don't you think you qualify? Oh, I, I, one instance in particular. Well, my wife got divorced like 10 years ago. I'm like, okay. Was, so that was like 10 years ago. How did that affect you today? Oh, you know, the credit got messed up. And I'm like, what do you think her credit scores are? Oh, they're probably over 800. I'm like, that's pretty good. You know, didn't she say she's a nurse? I'm like, yeah, how does she make? Oh, about 130,000 a year. That's pretty good. Why don't you think she would qualify? <laughs> well, that divorce 10 years ago, I'm like, let's try, let's try putting her on the loan and see what happens. And I'm like, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going to help you buy this home. We could have helped you buy the last one, except you didn't put her on. You should have put her on. And then I've had people that they're like, I'm never going to qualify. Uh, and you, I don't mind doing the work, right? That's what mm -hmm. I tell people all the time. Hey, I don't mind doing the work. This is my job. You got to do your part. Yeah. And then there's a part that we're going to do together. And so you do your part, then I'll do my part. And then we'll work together and see what happens. You may or may not qualify, but let's just do the work. Why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then at least if we do the work and you don't qualify, now we can have a, a, a deeper conversation with them about why they don't qualify. What do they need to do in order to become qualified? And what do they need to work on and set up a game plan and set up a follow-up call four or five months out? Um, you know, so when those opportunities come up, that's an eye-opener for me. These people thought they had no problem buying a home, and there's no way to buy a home. And these people over here thought there's no way you could buy a home and they have no reason not to buy a home. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just people know what they know and they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. So I just try to take my time. Just try to take my time with them. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you're, you're getting in, you're asking the personal questions. You're trying to discover what the, the motivation is and, and mm -hmm. why they want it and, and move forward. And I have to do the same thing. I have to go in. Why do you want a floor? What do you, how do you want it to perform? How do you, you know, what kind of, family life do you have is it super active do you have pets like right. all these questions really start affecting the the choice of what kind of product we should put in or um you know for you somebody might come in and be like i want this eight hundred thousand dollar house and you're like well you qualify for five hundred thousand somebody might come mm -hmm. to me and be like i want all this flooring done well that's going to be forty thousand dollars well my budget's 30. Okay. So we can look at, you know, we can change product. You can do some of your own removal. We can, you don't have to lower your price to fit their budget. You have to lower expectations or have them do some of the work. And I'm sure you kind of have the same thing, right? Like, Hey, you may really want this, but you can't afford it. Like the numbers yeah. say, this is what you're good for. Right. We have the we have to show you have the ability to repay the loan at the time of closing, right? Mm -hmm. There was a huge foreclosure crisis back in 2008, nine, ten. You know, now there's yes. all these different standards set up. But I think too, it's also being able to speak with people at a making it easy to understand. You know, there's a lot of technical things, abbreviations uh, that we can say in our business, and I think a lot of people get so accustomed to saying it to a process or, or underwriter that they try to use DTI, LTV, you know, to talk with the customer. A customer's like, what the heck are you even saying to me, man? I don't understand any of that. So mm -hmm. kind of like construction, you know, I just, we added a bathroom to a basement. I got, I got a, uh, a rough estimate of what it was going to cost. Seven months later, we finally move in. I'm like, they're like, yeah, I don't have time to do that. So I get another bid, extremely detailed. And, and I like detail, you know, mm -hmm. numbers guy. Yeah. I got get all the detail and at the end of the number, it's $26,000. I'm like, for a bathroom? I mean, and this guy was telling me it was going to probably be 12, between 10 and 15,000. That was seven months ago. Lumber's gone up. Everything's gone up. So yeah. I get referred to another contractor. He, and he literally gives me a square with a toilet and sink. And it's like, you want this in, in uh, laminate, 12,000? You want a towel, 15,000. I'm like, are you... <laughs> Are you sure it's going to be it? Because <laughs> this is extremely vague, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of the recommendations from two people that had good experience with them, we went with it. But I was scared the entire time. Like, I'm going to come down here. It's going to be a half a bathroom. <laughs> I'm going to get stuck <laughs> with a mess. And this is not typical of me to do this. And the guy did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. The bathroom not great, timely, professional. But it was almost so vague, whereas, like, the handshake, and you're like, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know, but it saved me $11,000. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 
you know, same, same with mortgages. We can go into making it so complex and so intricate where people are so bored and don't want to even talk about it, or, or now you're way over their head and they feel dumb, or we could talk about it be extremely vague and they don't feel like you're giving them their choices, or you need somewhere right in the middle, right? Mm-hmm. Enough detail, but enough vagueness to where it just it's easier to understand. And I think I have a really good way to explain that to people. Um, and make it easy. Make it. E- I mean, we got to make it easy for people. Yeah, uh, that's, people get ready. that's exactly it. If you're trying to make a sale, make it easy. I was just actually looking for uh, advertising rates for some magazines. And I went on the website and I'm clicking around and it gives me all the the, the demographic data and the metrics and, and reach and, and, and all this stuff. It tells me exactly how I have to deliver the files and what sizes they can be. No rates. Mm. I have to contact them. But every other magazine I went to, like I get a full like 20 page PDF and I can go through and it has all the same information and it, and it gave me rates. And I was like, well, I, you made it too hard. Like, I don't want to work with you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else are you going to hide from me? What else are you going to make me dig for? I got yeah. a full time yeah. job. My job is not to sell me your advertisement. Exactly. Just tell me what it is and I'll buy it. Correct. You know, I'll buy the size I want to buy. Yep. So, I mean, make it, make it easy, you know, communicate with them. Don't put things in the way of, of buying. And I, and I'm sure that's a, that's a valuable lesson of, you know, do you have somewhere that you've kind of changed your process over the years because you used to put obstacles in, in people's way building these relationships? Yeah. Yeah. I would say probably my first year was obviously the most complex. I was learning mortgages. I didn't understand mortgages. I was doing what people were telling me to do at closing. We'd be really close on the numbers, but not, you know, let's just say there's a thousand dollar buffer, right? Well, they weren't expecting to come in with an extra thousand bucks, right? So, you know, I learned that, hey, these are going to be rough numbers, but they're going to be close. But, you know, it could sway this way or that way because of the following. So I think, you know, anytime you're learning a business, you're learning how to explain the business. You're mm-hmm. feeling out your presentation and how to spell it out so people have a good understanding and at the very end have a good experience. Because bottom line, doesn't matter how nice you were or how much they liked you. If that end result was not a good feeling, they're not going to come back. They're not going to refer business to you. And ultimately, that's what we're in here for. We're not here to go out and we're going to grind it out every day, but we're not here to also have to fight our own tarnished brand, right? Mm-hmm. If you do a good job, you have a good name. You can stand by that because you've worked with integrity and then your clients are going to help support you. Your referral partners are going to help support you. Mm -hmm. But but if you say you're going to do this and you don't do it, or you say it's going to come out this way and it doesn't, you know, it's really hard to backtrack. Yes. Now with that, with that said, it's also important to hold our partners accountable if they misexplain something as well as our clients. You know, I just had mm-hmm. that experience with a client. He's like, this has been a terrible experience. I'm like, well, I'm really sorry you feel that way. You told me the last one was a real ter- terrible experience too. You also told me your wife works full time and she doesn't. She works part time at two different jobs. Okay. You also didn't tell me you had a third lien, which affected this entire deal. And you told me you didn't even understand what that, what, what that even was. Like how you, you signed paperwork for it. How did you not know what that is? And so uh, customers, I think are important because they only know what they know. So it's yeah. important to hold them accountable as well. Try to be respectful and explain, hey, you have a part in this. So if you don't, if you tell me you make 20 bucks an hour and you make 17 bucks an hour, that's going to affect things. Yes. You said you work full time and you're working 40 hours one week, 30 hours the next week, six hours the following week, 40 hours. That's not full time. You know, so mm-hmm. you know, it's <laughs> helping them understand what what's really important with a loan and that they have a part in too. Uh, yeah, I mean, a communication is huge, right? And I think that's where a lot of the, the problems come in is that I'm under communicating or they're under communicating and I'm not digging deep enough. And then it's, well, you said you were going to do this. Well, no, that's not what I said. And so sometimes mm-hmm. it's a matter of to build that relationship and have it really solid. Just because we have this conversation in, in person, follow up with an email. Follow up with a text message, put it in, hey, I heard you say this, that, and the other thing I need you to do, you know, X, Y, and Z, and then I'm going to be able to do ABC. Mm-hmm. Now there's documentation or, and if it was something was misunderstood, they can come back and be like, whoa, 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 no, it's, you know, it's these things. And then we can go ahead and, and do, 
the next steps. And so the upgrade or whatever. now, now, and, and there's, you, you can go back. In fact, I just had a, I had a project where I originally booked dates with the client to install one week. I came back and they said they would prefer the the following week. And I was like, I don't know if I can move it. I have to see if I can find somebody else to fill that spot, blah, blah, blah. And I reached out and I texted them. I was like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to move this and it's, it's going to go here. And so you get the week you wanted. And then I'm on a project, you know, two hours into my day and he's reaching out like, Hey, you coming by today? You said you'd be here at seven. I was like, next week. He was like, no, 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 this week. I was like, no, 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 hold on. And I scroll through the text and I, and I found it. I texted to him. I was like, I'm sorry, man. We, we talked about this. Like I, I moved you. And he was like, oh yeah, I forgot to put it in my schedule. So yeah, yeah that, we're all human. We all make mistakes. Absolutely. It, correct. I had, a, I had an appointment, a presentation or a, a presentation, a meeting yesterday. Totally didn't think about it till the night before. And someone was like, Hey, can I see you tomorrow? I'm like, I don't know. Let me see. Oh shoot! I got this meeting. <laughs> nope, I gotta mm-hmm. go to this meeting. Mm-hmm. I said I was gonna be there. I gotta be there. I should have looked at my calendar a little bit quicker. I think it's also super important when you start to feel a customer starting to have not a great experience, and they're a referral from a friend or a partner, like mm-hmm. a realtor builder. It's really important to reach out to that partner because they're only gonna hear, and if you don't, they're only gonna hear the client's bad review. And so, you know, for example, that one I just went over, I reached out to the realtor who actually referred them to me and said, Hey, I just need, want to talk to you about, you know, this, this deal, kind of what happened. Obviously we can't go through too much detail, but you can give them an update and like, Hey, just so you know, when they call you to complain, this is not how it went down. Mm-hmm. Here's my, here's my, here's my assessment of it. I just want to give you a heads up. I still appreciate the referral. I just don't want them to bad mouth me without having a chance to explain. But try to do that before the client reaches out to the person I'm referring mm-hmm. to. Them. Well, I think that's just keeping the lines of communication open. Like even as I go through, like I'm trying mm-hmm. to let clients know where I'm at at the end of the day. I'm getting there in the morning. I'm letting them know what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm going to let them, you know, just, hey, here's what's going on. What do you need? What do you have going on? Like, you know, do you do the kids need something? Does the dog need to be let out during the day? Like, not that I want that responsibility to try not right. to take that one on. But, you know, there's certain right. clients I've done multiple projects for. If they left and they asked me to let the dog out back, like I'll probably let the dog out back. But it's just having that open line of communication so that you're you're both on the same page and you, you're not getting confused right but i i still i the old adage of under promise and over deliver always rings true to me like i'd rather tell people that they're going to get less and then be able to deliver more instead of promising that they they're going to be able to get to the moon and getting them halfway there and they get a get stuck in space and 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 now there's now what do you do for them you can't do anything and they're angry and they're defensive and so Mm -hmm. like in your line of work you know same thing with our line of work with fees there's a cost associated with it try and pad those fees you know and tell them hey i'm padding these fees for a reason yeah i'm padding this cost for a reason at the end i can outline where it went and if it didn't go anywhere we'll lower our price you know like Mm -hmm. for us if we don't use the fees for the title or escrow appraisal it came in less cool we'll lower your loan amount it's not a big deal but if i tell you it's eight thousand. and It comes in at nine thousand. You're gonna be pissed. Exactly. I tell you, it's gonna be five hundred. And it comes in at nine thousand. You're like, oh, cool. I get five hundred bucks back, right? Exactly. Everyone's mad when the when look. I don't know anybody that sticks to a budget on a giant remodel project. I don't. Everyone goes over budget. You know, they plan thirty, they spend fifty. I'm trying to tell people when they do flooring with me. Look. I'm going to tell you, you know, over the phone, I can give you a rough estimate. I'm going to tell you it's going to be 12 to, you know, 15,000. I hope I come out and and I hit 11, but I'd rather like kind of scare you now and and give you a little bit higher number and then come in lower. And no one's mad when a remodel's over and they got extra money in their pocket. Everyone's (laughs) pissed when they go out of budget over budget and they're like, how do I pay for this? I don't have the cash. The credit cards are maxed out already. Like, what do I do? So... Yeah, and we do construction loans, and so the same thing. You know, construction takes longer than anybody anticipated. It was more expensive. The permits took forever, mm-hmm. and people, you know, I, you know, I'm 20% loan officer, 80% counselor. You know, it's like you got you're managing these emotions and stress levels and anxiety for, you know, on a refi, 30 days to a build, you know, up to a year, year and a half, depending on how big the build out is. And it's like you know, keeping people calm 
you know, is, is a super important part of the situation. And it's just the communication, setting the proper expectations. Mm -hmm. Don't undercut them just to get the business because that business just talks trash about you afterwards. There's no point. You, you just lost that. You did one deal, but now you've lost seven referrals or eight referrals or whatnot, you know, and just tell people mm -hmm. you got it. Are you, <clears throat> excuse me. Are you tracking any of like the, the lifetime value of a client? Since you, I know you said your your assistants using the the software more than than you are. Like, mm -hmm. are you putting in there that hey, you know, Bob closed and then you know he sent in Sally and George and and they both sent in people. So are you tracking any of that? Do you have offhand like what no, lifetime value I, of a client is? No, mm -hmm. I don't really track. I, I don't. You know, the, the transaction to me is. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Like, I don't really even know my, my, my volume is month to month until the end of the month's over. Mm -hmm. No, I don't track. I got my projection on what I'm hoping to close, but I really don't look at that until after the month's closed because no matter what, I got to come in and work hard every day. So it doesn't really matter if it's closed or if it's going to close. It's no matter what I got to come in and I either working on loans mm -hmm. or I'm working on trying to get referrals and leads. Right. And mm -hmm. so I don't really track, you know, um, they're all valuable. I mean, I don't track like how much I've yeah. made off of each person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, if they if, if they come to me, great. We want to take care of them. We're just gonna gonna do a good job. Hopefully, get referrals out of it. But yeah, I don't have like a okay. track a tree. Are you doing anything? What What are you doing to get people like like buying a home's a pain in the butt, man? Like it was honestly one of the worst experiences of my life. Like buying my home. Now, granted, I bought in September of two thousand and eight, and it was a foreclosure. <laughs> and I hear those are like just kind of a pain in general. Um, but I, essentially, I mean, you're taking on this huge, it, it's stressful. It's a ton of money. So how are you building a relationship where people are like, you gotta go use Luke. Luke's the best lender. You, you gotta use him because man, I could, I can talk to Phoenix is ridiculous for the amount of realtors we have. Um, right. the entire state is, I think it's like 60,000. And we're 7.5 million people in the state, I think. So almost 1% of the population is like a realtor. Wow. It's, it's insane. <laughs> um, I, I, there, there are a dime a dozen around here. Like I, I know 15 and all of them are going to be like, well, go talk this one, this one, this one, this one. Like, how do you make sure you stand out for something that like people don't want to deal with? It's mm, a good question. You know, I think, it's, it's kind of funny because there's lots of lenders, lots of loan officers, a lot, you know, and, and you walk into meet with a realtor and there's business cards all over the place. Or, mm -hmm. You know, I think that uh, the problem is a lot of people come in feeling like they're super special. They're the best person in the business in the neighborhood. And they are here. I'm going to drop off 15 flyers to tell you how awesome I am. I have those two, <laughs> but I never take them with me my first or second time. <laughs> you know, I try to come in because no matter what, you, know, you had mentioned special programs, you know, we do construction lending, which a lot of people don't do. We're renovation lending. We got programs where you can lock your interest rate, wire shopping, which is going to be super important why rates are going up. Um, regardless of all that, if they don't like you from a personal standpoint, they're not going to want to send their business to you or send their clients to you because you're just not going to be able to relate to them. You're not going to be able to give them the experience that they want the clients to have. And really, that's what we we do for people. We off, you know, we provide extremely great customer service, clear and concise communication. We don't waver, you know, on, Hey, I didn't say that it's I've worked all the time on these construction loans. Hey, you said you can close in 30 days. Nope. I've never said that. Actually the emails I sent you all say close 45 to 60 days from this time frame. Mm -hmm. So you want me to send that email again? <laughs> Cause I know I never said that. And so I think that I just, again, holding other people accountable, I hold myself accountable too. Not to, not to be humble and not just walk in like, you know, they're the only lender in the neighborhood that's going to do a good job. There's going to be lots of really good lenders. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be, so you're going to have, same, same with, you know, contractors, realtors, builders. You're going to have uh, a few that are really good. You're going to have a lot that are mediocre and you're going to have a few that are bad. The bad ones are eventually going to get shoved out. Mediocre will always kind of stay in that mediocre area. And the high really aren't doing nothing something necessarily that much different or that much better it's just a little thing a little better communication a little mm -hmm. better projection on their completion timelines where people could say when i have one builder 
where it's like, hey, we're going to be done in six months. What if you need a seventh or eighth month draw? We will never need that. We will be done in six months. One draw for six months. And then you have ones that are like, yeah, man, nine, 12 months will be done. <laughs> well, I got this one, though. They say, they're, they're, they say it, and they're done in six months every time. You, it's, if you know they're going to do what they say they're going to do. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's just what, that's what we do. If I tell you we're going to do it, if I tell you we're going to close a loan, we're going to close a loan. You know, depending on your profile, there might be some more bumps and bruises. If I'm not sure we're going to close it, we're going to get it pre-reviewed and end up underwriting before we get you spending any money. Yeah. Do do what you say when you say you're going to do it. So That's it. I not, love to do something special, but, you know, it's just that little bit, mm-hmm. a little bit better than, than, the, than the, uh, some others. Well, I'll admit, I told you about halfway through this, I was going to jump in for an advertisement. I'm 10 minutes late. So uh, yeah. we're going to jump in here for, for, yeah. a, for a quick little break. All right. The International Surface Event, the annual flooring stone and tile sourcing experience in Las Vegas has a unique experience for the industry. Introducing the Surfaces Show Home, Cali Boo Vineyard by Jennifer Farrell. Surfaces is working with celebrity design and TV host Jennifer Farrell to develop a 7,300 square foot show home in California. The home is under construction, but due to technology from Visualizer Plus, the industry can experience virtual room reveals each month. Then plan to view Calibu Vineyard in person or virtually summer 2022 during the home tours. Visit www.calibuvineyard.com now to sign up and join the journey. Luke, how do we, how are you staying in front of people? Uh, I know you mentioned like being on, on Facebook and stuff earlier uh communication is obviously you know we're, we're talking about communication so what are you doing to stay in front of people if the average you know span is is three to five years before they're going to need you again that that's a long time to be not in front of somebody it's really easy when they have to talk to you every month and, and you're trying to get docs out of them and you're like hey i need your i need your pay stub and then two days later hey i need your pay stub <laughs> because I, yeah. I, I i know that you 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 track down so much stuff because people just don't do it and, and well, you're constantly in, in wrong, front of them. Yeah, they send the wrong format, and you know they think they sent it in five times, but it's always half pages or it's cut off. And um, you know, you know, we started to do the client appreciation events. Mm-hmm. You know, we do birthday calls, happy anniversary calls. You know, we pick up the phone and call people. I think that that combined with the experience we provide them, the majority of my clients remember me. And we did a good job. And those soft touches, the auto, you know, Salesforce does an automated emails too, which is great. Okay. You know, they go during the anniversary, they go out on the birthday. We also pay for uh, uh, monthly or bi monthly marketing that will either go out mail, email, um, a different touch, a different format, you know. Uh, when it comes mm-hmm. to staying in front of realtors, that's also a huge part too is, you know, if we're not busy, we better be busy trying to be busy. You know, if you have a, have a big lull in our business, Mm -hmm. that's a problem. (laughs) Okay. So, you know, I, I do lots of sales calls outside, you know, stopping by realtors, stopping by builders. In addition to those, we also are looking at starting home buyer classes. So that's going to be a way to try and get a lead generation going. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a way to pay back our realtors too, because we can have them come do a 20, 30 minute uh, presentation about what they do in their role of home buying. And that's a way to support them as well. I, you know, the, the home buyer education, I think is, is genius. Even just doing like basic financial literacy would be great. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of smaller mom and pop retailers, they get frustrated, uh, especially like us installers get frustrated watching what the box stores do when they put on educational classes and they're teaching you how to install, install your own flooring or install your own backsplash. And everyone's like, Oh my God, it's disgusting. It's so wrong. Right. Why do doesn't why don't why aren't the mom and pop shops then copying and offering the same class man pay pay one of your installers to come in and teach a class saturday morning on how Mm -hmm. to properly install a backsplash and then everyone freaks out and they're like but then they're gonna steal my work hey i got news for you the diyer was never your client but their five friends that aren't are and they're gonna say go down to bob and jan's flooring store and talk to them because they taught me how to do it they really know what they're doing they're they're really great people over there um i i think that you you give something away 
and it always comes back, especially when it's educational, because right. people really value being able to make an informed decision. And to be honest, there's always more than enough work out there, especially right now in, in uh, well, the market's starting to cool down, but you've been gangbusters for like the past two years. I'm sure it was, you weren't having to drum up work and really seek it out. You were probably getting more calls than you could almost do. And, and construction's been pretty much the same way as, I, I want to remodel. I just bought a home. I want to remodel. I, I don't want to buy right now because it's not a good time to buy, but I don't like where I live. Or, you know, when the pandemic first hit, everyone was like, I'm stuck. I, I don't have anywhere to go. I have money burning a hole in my pocket mm -hmm. and I'm sick of looking at my house. I never realized how ugly it was because I was never in it. So for the short time they were, then it could tolerate it. Correct. So <laughs> it, you know, the construction industry has been just as, as gangbusters, but it's, look, it, it's not going to last forever. It's going to slow down. And so how do we now go and, and generate those leads and stay in front of these people to get them to say, Hey, this is, this is a really special experience. And I think that's some of the best ways is putting education out there. I don't have a problem telling you how to do something for free and, and look they can't do their own loan docs but you can get them a better credit score you can get them saving better knowing how to budget to actually set money aside for a down payment so right well and then you know there's these different you know real estate community events brian buffini huge real estate coach you know we've you know a lot of realtors go there and super loyal to that I've gone to many of those too with former employers and coworkers and with my realtor partners. And it's, you know, one thing they always ask is who had, who in this audience has had some sort of financial education. And you got to think these are all adults mm -hmm. and there's probably 17 out of several hundred people that stand up and, and you know, what they're trying to illustrate is, Hey, you're about to go into a hundred percent commission job. How are you going to put yourself in a position where you're not stressed out because you know when you got when you but when you got to make that sale it's a total different presentation when you want the sale but you don't need it when you want the flooring job but you don't need it mm -hmm, you're like mm -hmm. hey man it's going to be 12 to 15,000 and here's yep. why it's going to be 12 to 15,000 they're like well how accurate are you going to be well how accurate do you need me to be do you need me to be within 50 bucks because mm -hmm. if we got to be within 50 bucks this is already too big for you you know, I once had a client tell me, he's like, how accurate is this number? Are we like plus or minus five bucks a month? I'm like, listen, if you're about five bucks a month, you, you are shopping at a price point that's way too high for your budget. Regardless, if I say you can afford it, if you need to be at 1700 and worth mm -hmm. 2400 <laughs> we got to get that way down. Yeah. Or you yeah. got to not buy right now. You know, so uh, financial education is huge. And, I, you know, regardless of where you're at, you know, what state you're in, you know, it, People just don't have a good knowledge of what it takes to buy a home. They want to buy a home and they feel, see all these other people buying a home and they want, want they feel like they deserve it. And mm -hmm. kind of like that mentality where we're in the last decade, you know, it's been, I mean, we're, we, we have to qualify people, but um, they just don't understand what it takes. So I think this home buyer education is going to be a really great resource for the community. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's a great way to show our referral partners that, Hey, most of my business is referral business, either from past clients I have a realtor that was referred by that realtor, uh, referred by a friend. And my, my opportunities of being able to refer day in, day out leads to realtors, not good. What I do is provide them the experience that they want for their clients and make sure if I say that loan's going to close, it's going to close so they get paid and their client has a good experience. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a great way for us to involve those partners, bring in the yeah. realtor, bring in the home inspector, bring in our title and escrow rep, let them have a little bit of a showcase and then anybody from that group, if they decide they want to do an application, we just, we're going to put it in Salesforce and make a note of it. These were the partners that were on this presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if they end up buying a home, they're going to work with this realtor, this tile and escrow company, this inspector, hopefully, right? We're going to yeah. re refer them back. Can't make them, but that's who we're going to suggest. They probably yes. give them a shot. And so it's a good way just to kind of help, you, you know, um, get in front of people. Right now, as you say, things are going to slow down. Rates have gone up to 2.5% in two and a half months. Yep. If refis will slow down, if, I mean, you're always going to have someone divorce, got to pay off credit card debt. You know, there's going to be some reason someone's going to need to do it, but definitely mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. in the amount of volumes that we've had Yes, for the last two years for sure. But over the course of a decade, 
You know, if someone's got a three percent rate, why would they take a five, five and a half percent rate just to sure. get ten thousand dollars? It doesn't make any sense. Correct. You know, and then we as professionals got to be able to say that, even though, hey, man, I'm used to closing X dollar, X amount of loans per month, and now I'm closing this amount of loans per month. Maintaining that integrity, and if if it's not a loan that you would do, or you would recommend to a family member, don't mm-hmm. recommend it to mm-hmm. client. Give them the good information. Work with integrity. Give them their options. And let them make the choice. But don't. Don't make it sound like it's super good if it's not really benefit. I, you know, and and that's why people are going to come back and they're gonna they're gonna tell their friends and neighbors about you know, hey, look, I just did this thing. Like you've got to go talk to Luke because he's he'll shoot you straight. I, I think honesty and integrity go a long way. And there's not yeah. sadly there's not a lot of businesses that I feel actually operate with honesty and integrity. They're looking at the bottom line and how they can drive that as opposed to. I want to make a living and be comfortable, but I want to do it by making sure, you know, I'm a good steward of your money. And and that's that's mm-hmm. really something that I've changed my outlook on is that if you're going to trust me, then I do want I want to be a good steward of your money. And if I think that 50 cents a square foot on a product is going to get you a much better end result. Well, 50 cents a square foot on 2,000 square feet is only 1,000 bucks. What's the difference between 12000 and $13,000? At that point, not a lot. Right. If, you know, like you said, right, if, if someone's coming in and they're worried about $5 a month on a $2,400 a month loan, but they really want to be at 1800 then they need to convey that mm-hmm. to you and say like, hey, what can I get for 1800 a month? Where does that, where does that put me? you know, 18, 1850, somewhere in there. Like that's my sweet spot of let, what I feel comfortable putting out every month. But then you're going to be able to realistically hit the the mark for them. And they they should be ultimately really happy with that service coming back, telling their friends like, Hey, he's going to take care of you. He's going to make sure it's right. And I think that's, that's when you really start building that word of mouth and, and that referral mm-hmm. marketing. Yeah. And I, he- it's what's funny is I had a client buy a second home in a different state, you know, he's like, Oh, can I get $50 off my appraisal fee? I'm like, no, we <laughs> no appraisers charge what they charge. We, I don't, we don't make any of that money. Yeah. So no, I mean, you can ask them when they show up if you want. <laughs> That's for a recommendation on a home inspector. So I gave him a recommendation on a home inspector. I was, he's like, how much is it going to be? I don't know, 450, 400, 500, mm-hmm. somewhere. In but, but they did a really good job for these customers. They did a good job for me. You can choose whoever you want to choose. Here you ask for recommendation. Here's who I would recommend. Calls me, inspector calls me. Like, dude wants fifty bucks off. I'm like, what'd you tell him? He's like, I gave him fifty bucks off. I was like, that's nice. That's nice of you. <laughs> and uh, so he has the home inspection, right? And so the customer calls me like, I'm not happy with your home inspector. This is like five days for closing. I'm like, okay, well, what happened? Well, this and this, and there's a broken window. I'm like. You know, home, so I call home inspector. I'm like, hey, man, so what, tell me about what's going on. You know, you did a really good job. From, if I'm going to refer you out, just give me, tell me what happened from mm-hmm. your, Europe. He's like, you know, I've been in the house in three weeks. I don't know if that window got broke from a rock on a lawnmower. It's being landscaped. So, no, it wasn't broken while I was there. I was like, but I did tell the guy there's three joists, four joists that have cracks in them, and he should get those inspected by an engineer. Guess what he never did? Yeah. He's pissed off because of the bro- broken window. But he didn't go get the broken floor looked at by an engineer. And that's a big settling issue. I mm-hmm. did point all that out. And so I think time, sometimes customers helping people understand there's more to a rate. There's more to a cost. You know, if you want a, a sorry, I think my computer is starting to fritz out. If you, uh, if you just budget shop for everything, I think that's one thing I've learned as I've matured as well is if mm-hmm. you're always going to save that five bucks, you're gonna you're gonna compromise the quality, yes. right? You're gonna compromise the quality of the business that's going to do the work for you, uh, and the level of experience. So, you know, I've changed my mentality. Okay, you tell me your opinion. How much is it gonna cost? Well, it's more than I expected. Explain that to me. Give me a little bit more information. Why? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. that does make sense. We're gonna hire you. Or we're not gonna hire you. We're gonna shop it out. You know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. One thing I've learned is, hey, if you want to get a quality job, you're gonna have to pay for it. I had a customer one time, past customer, helped him buy a home, came to me. We've got all these different scenarios, got him into a position where he qualified for a home. He claimed, you know, he did forbearance during, you know, 2020 COVID. Mm -hmm. I'm in a position where he qualified for a home. He's out there on a Sunday texting me, hey, 
found a home, going to make an offer, but I shopped you out with Navy Federal Credit Union or another another lender. Let's take that yeah. out. Another lender. I was like, okay, cool. He's like, can you get the interest rate down like another quarter percent? I'm like, no, no, I can't. <laughs> One, you don't even have a contract, so we can't lock it in anyway. So if you're going to nickel and dime us every single day for something we can't even guarantee you, you're wasting your time. Go get under contract, then we can talk about the pricing. Yeah. I was like, is the other lender responding to your t- your text on Sunday or Friday night at nine o'clock? Did your other lender explain to you what you need to do in order to get yourself in a position to buy the second home? Well, no, but their rates like a quarter percent better. So the lender didn't do any of the other stuff that's going to give you a better experience that should would got you in a home. They would have just done the application application and then said you don't qualify. Mm-hmm. They would have declined you, not coached you into getting yourself in that position to acquire another home, and you want to bicker over 12 bucks a month? What are you talking about? Don't, how about this? Don't ever call me again. Yeah, That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that goes back to when you said, like, getting yourself into a position to where you don't need the work. And, and honestly, that's over the last few years, I've been mm-hmm. able to do that. And I've built up you know, a clientele and a referral base, and I, I do advertising and... Uh, there's enough leads coming in and the, the job board stays full enough that when I go out, I can sit there and confidently say, it's this price. Well, that's too expensive. Okay. Well, if you want me, then yeah. this is the cost. If you want to bring it down, you can do X, Y, and Z. I don't have to lower my price. I can take things off the the list of work to be done. You can do your own removal. You can do your own delivery. Go pick up the material. I'll, I'll tell you where the vendor is. Drive your truck down there with a trailer and you load in a hundred. Like I got to deliver 90 boxes tomorrow, right? So I got to go pick up two pallets worth of stuff. I got to drive them 40 minutes away from my house. I've got to unload 90 boxes one by one into a house. That takes time. You're going to get charged for it. I'm sorry. You want to do it? Right. That fee can come off. It does not bother me. Uh, and, and so you you really start breaking these things down. Like you said, you're answering the phone on Sundays. You're you're educating them through. You got them to where it's at. And they're bickering over $12 a month. I, look, man, you're not, you're not for me. Go work with the other company. Get denied. Don't have your second house. And uh, don't tell your friends about me either. I'm okay with that. Because yeah, I, 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 because they're probably yeah, like go, you. Yeah, if you want to go do that nine to five, and you get, you know, I get the round robin call center, then that's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, my clients get a different experience. Exactly. You know, you can't always be the cheapest. If you're the cheapest, you don't make enough profit. You're going to close. If you're the most expensive, you're not going to have that residual return business because you're too expensive. You have to be able to provide fair pricing, and just do something a little bit better than the other companies. You know, like communicate better, work mm-hmm. a little harder, mm-hmm. be, you know, be a little bit more accessible. Um, and they're going to have that great experience and come back to you. Yes. Uh, I know you got to, we're, we're a little bit over. I know you got to run. So I, I, I would love to keep going. I know we could, but yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank yeah. you. I apologize. So if, if anyone's interested in, in wanting to try and get a mortgage right now, cause look, you probably don't want to refi as, as he said, but <laughs> if you want to acquire something new, yeah. uh, you're licensed in a bunch of States. So go ahead. What, what States do you work in and, and where no. can people find you? Yeah, appreciate it. So I am licensed in Idaho, Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, and Tennessee. Our company is licensed in like 45 different states. So if you can, what well, you can reach me at lwagner at houseloan.com. My phone number is 253-677-2663. Reach on out. We'll, we'd be happy to take care of you and go through some scenarios. Awesome. Is there is there anything we didn't hit on that you think we we should have? No, I think we covered a lot of information. I think it was a a great opportunity. Hopefully this helps people understand, you know, the customer service aspect of it and then retention of clientele, keep that constant communication, touch base with them every now and then, let them know you're thinking about them, give them a happy birthday call. They'll remember you and they need a job. Awesome. Uh, you, look, you summed it up for me. I don't even have to do it now. I, <laughs> I appreciate it, Luke. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully David Sandana is listening. He introduced us. So I'll give David a little shout out for for putting this together. He he highly recommended you. Um, yeah, great guy. Diligence flooring. Give him a call for <laughs> in, in Washington. There you go. Uh, so that's what I've got. You know, I want to, I want to make sure everybody knows, do, do me a favor, like subscribe, leave a review, tell a friend, please let's, let's help get this information out there. 
You can find more information over at FloorAcademyPod.com. We got the shop over there. Go pick up yourself a a sweet T-shirt or a hoodie. Check us out on YouTube, and you can see all the funny facial expressions I make as I interview people and uh, get a little more interactive over there with the with the video component. I would love to to grow that aspect of this little venture of mine. And you know, if you're if, you, if you're struggling, insurance people would love for you to be more organized. So go over at FloorAcademyPod.com. I got the file section. I've got a little tool for, for the insurance stuff. It's a spreadsheet. Take a couple of pictures when you buy something. Put the serial number, the date you purchased it, the value. If anything ever happens to your tools, man, you're going to shoot that PDF right on over to the insurance people. They're going to hate you because you're so organized, but they're going to love you too because you're actually organized and they're like, oh, well, okay. And you're not going to miss anything because if your tools get stolen, you're going to forget about all the little things you use once a month. And then that's all going to come out of your pocket after they cut you a check and it's a month down the road. So go use those little tools that I got over there. They're, they're excellent. Uh, Luke, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I'm glad we were able to make this happen. Me too. Thank you, Kyle. And uh, yeah, I appreciate all your insights. All right. That sounds good. You guys have a good week. You too. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.